Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I, I was doing my morning video. I was talking about Tua Tungavola and the uh, basically dealing with that situation, which is tragic, to say the least. Seeing him literally on the field was just bad. And I was going to do my whole morning video start out with that and then go into uh, Dak Prescott and things. But I decided to separate the two of them because uh, it's literally two polar opposite things. And um, you feel bad for Tua. Um, I never want to see guys get screwed up on the football field. And seeing him like that, that, that was just a solemn moment for me. But um, the thing about football is... It doesn't matter. Football just keeps on rolling on, and it's the next man up. So the Cowboys are getting ready to take on the New Orleans Saints on Sunday, and it's it's almost comical to me because, um, and, and you'll see the clip in a bit, uh, listening to the talking heads um, about the Cowboys. Okay, so the Cowboys, of course, playing the Cleveland Browns, which had the number one uh, yardage defense last year, including the uh, NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett, going against a rookie. And the thought last night, or, or the thought from them is, well, the Cowboys, uh, you know, they didn't do anything special on offense. They were just okay. Listening to them talking about New Orleans going against the Carolina Panther team that's in utter shambles, you would think that that was the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I'm not going to say that New Orleans isn't a good team. They are a good team. But you have to look at it and say, Cleveland was a playoff team last year with a really good defense on the road playing against the Carolina Panthers that are probably them and the Giants, the two worst teams in football, that maybe they're – you know, the performance you got from New Orleans may have been just a little bit, you know, uh, graded on a curve, so to speak. But we'll find out more this week when, of course, our two teams go against each other. And I hope that our Cowboys find a way to get a win. Last night, Mike ended up texting me along with da 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 damn Gina um, last night about a premiere on um, – I am athlete. That's what it's called. I am athlete, which um, I had not, forgive me, I had not heard of them uh, or seen them before. Um, they are a YouTube channel that has over a million subscribers. I'm surprised I didn't hear about it. Um, and But they haven't been putting content on in a while. So last night there was a premiere of Tad Prescott interviewing his brother, Dak, of course. And it's a great video, and I, I'll tell you, it's 23 minutes long, but I want to take a little piece of it on how Dak Prescott feels um, having grown up in a trailer park and being poor to now being the highest paid player in the NFL and what it really means about being a Dallas Cowboy potentially for life. And what people, maybe people who hate Dak Prescott, um, if Dak Prescott ends up staying healthy for two seasons or so, he'll own every passing record of the Dallas Cowboys, which will be nice. But ultimately what he has to do is he's got to win a Super Bowl. And it seems like now that the money issue is taken care of and so on, that this team is focused on doing just that. Let's listen into Tad and Dak for a little bit, and then we'll get back to this game. Our childhood in there. So, like, what's one of your favorite moments from the park? Uh, honestly, just really, it's where I fell in love with the game of football, as you know. Uh, um, being the youngest out there, not just of the 
the brothers, but um, I feel like any game we played in the trailer park, whether it be football, basketball, um, it was more majority of your friends, um, yeah. and, and I was just trying to keep up. Uh, and so all my memories really go back into being in that field in between the trailers. Um, maybe my most favorite one is you trying to always hit your celebration <laughs> on me, me chasing you down <laughs> to the very end. One day finally laid out, uh, got the ball out, made a fumble. Facts. Uh, and um, But, yeah, just – any any time we got to compete uh, in the trailer park, um, it, it was the highlight of, of not just that day, but it's what I carry with me now and the reason that I compete the way that I do. Um, following you, following Jace, following all the boys and just trying to keep up um, it is the competitor that I am. And I hope I exemplify that and show that um, every time I step on the field. And like when you did that, that's when I truly understood, like, man, this dude understands the game of football. Like, yeah. he was so advanced already right. at that point. Bro, but like I said, coming from that trailer park, like I said, man, three three boys being raised by our mom. I mean, there were nights that we went without. So going from that background to now, like I said, being, being the guy, the highest paid in NFL history, what does that mean to you? That's incredible. Yeah, it's a blessing. Um, Jeez. Um, you know, as you said, many nights going without, mm -hmm. I think credit to mom, credit to you boys. I never felt like I was going without me. I, I had the love. Um, I had what I needed, you know, and it, even at times you'd come home and the lights would be off. Mm -hmm. And instead of, you know, mom being able to pay that light bill, you know, it's easier to go pay $40 yeah. to go to touch house six. And straight up. Hell, to be honest with you, I thought it was a vacation. I was pumped to, you know, get to go swim at the pool that night, uh, get out of the house for a day or out of the trailer for a day that I never really saw the struggles that way. Um, and that, that's just, as I said, to credit to mom, credit to you boys, of, of just the love that uh, me being naive and not really understanding that, you know, the money and the, and, um, the struggles that we had, um, I never I never went without. And, and that's, the, that, that's the beauty of it. So now being the highest paid, I think it's a test in me to just always controlling what I can control. And at that time, I couldn't control whether the light bill or anything came on. It was my mood. It was loving y'all back. Um, to now, it's, you know, just doing what I can on the field and handling myself um, as the businessman as I am to um, focus on the things that I can control and love this game, give everything I can to this game, and understand everything takes care of itself when you do that. And so Facts. Um, that's the way, way that, that, that y'all raised me, really. Yeah, man. And like that also goes back to you with your because I remember you getting on my ass one day. I remember when you're like bitching, <laughs> like, dude, I'm tired of eating chicken because I'm mean, a weak chicken like four or five <laughs> times a night. Chicken's fire. Yeah, and I remember bitching about like, bro, tired. You like, bro, we shut up. We got something to eat. Yeah, like, fuck. Like, he's, he's right. We did close my mouth. So, Big facts, man, and like still in that trailer park, like you said, your love for football, you've always been a Dallas Cowboys fan. I mean, that goes back to Pop, that goes back to me in my earlier days before I kind of traded off a little bit, but I mean, you were a dot hard, and I remember your last deal. I remember, you know, I remember being with you when you got the phone call, and then you showing up, I think that was like two days later, and just out of nowhere gave me a blue face Rolex. And I was like, shit, and you're like, bro, we're Cowboys for life. Yeah. And now, you know, you said in the past, you know, when all the speculation about the contract is up, you know, this is where you want it to be. This is where you want to finish your career. And now Jerry's established that this is it, that you will be a Cowboy for life. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, first off, I plan to play more than four years. So do you yeah. have yeah. the contract um, to, to get that straight? Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I grew up a Cowboys fan, always wanted to, to really not only just be a Cowboy, be in the NFL, play the game that I love mm -hmm. and fell in love with at such a young age. And can't you really remember when I fell in love with it, but playing it at its highest level. Um, that's what's most important to me. The fact that I'm able to do that, I'm able to do that. Um, the team that I grew up a childhood fan um, and is as important as a city I've become a man in, um, being drafted here at 22, turned 23 months later, and to now be 31, starting a family. Um, it's a blessing just to, to, to start a legacy, but to now be able to say that I'm gonna finish my legacy here. Um, I owe so much to the city of Dallas uh, and, and I wanna be able to deliver my end of the deal and, and bring this city, bring the Jones, bring the Cowboys organization, the Super Bowl that's long overdue. Oh um, shit, we know that's coming. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, man. You touched on two things right there. You touched on both my dude, Jerry, and you touched on building your family. It's it's talking with Jerry first, like I said, Jerry Jones shows all of us the person, the GM and the owner that he is on TV. But what is it like, what is it to see Jerry Jones the man? Is there a little bit that you can give us that we don't get to see, maybe how he's influenced you off the field or maybe something you've taken from him? Yeah, I mean, 
businessman. Uh, I think first of that business I tried man. to take You're right about him that. And, and I, I idolize him as the way that he's ran his business and handles all business, um, which probably you know is the reason we duped out this contract. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, standing toe to toe with him, but really I uh, think the the deal getting done is a testament to who he is as a man and his loyalty. Um, he does it. He says it often. Once you're a cowboy, you're always a cowboy. And um, I know that not just for myself getting these contracts and, and playing under him, creating a relationship with him and the family, but mm -hmm. seeing other cowboys come and go play for other teams or maybe retire when they finish. But he always takes care of his players um, on the field, obviously, but then again, off the field. Uh, when, when you finish your, your career, if you spend any time here as a Dallas Cowboy, he treats you like a cowboy. And he, this is a place that you can call family, you can call home. Um, he always welcomes them back. Anybody that gets into trouble, um, he, he's going he's to be there to pick you up. He's going to be there if you need anything outside of the game of football uh, to, to really to, to show that loyalty. And he lives on that. And uh, he's, a, he's a hell of a dude. He really is. And his family is. And obviously, they've accepted us, his family as well. And uh, super blessed, super blessed to play for a guy like Jerry. No, and he is. I mean, I don't get, obviously, as much time around Jerry as you have, but I've had a little bit of time. And one of my, my favorite times around him was when we got to watch the McGregor fight with him. Yeah. And that's when I saw how much of a character he was. And he was running around throwing punches at Jake Glazer. I'm like, okay, Jerry, that little slow walk you do, that's the, that's the TV. Yeah. You look quicker than that. Yeah. It is a great video. It's 23 minutes long. Shout out to I Am Athlete uh, with that. And that gives you a little insight and desire that he has about wanting to win a Super Bowl for the Dallas Cowboys. And let's be honest here. In the end, that's all that matters to Cowboy fans. It, that's all that matters. And looking around the NFL, when you look at the uh, NFC and, and things and stuff, there's opportunity for the Cowboys. The Cowboys, like any team, to win a Super Bowl, you got to thread the needle. You got to stay healthy. You got to have the right players. You got to get the ball to bounce the right way. Maybe, just maybe, that this is the year maybe when things come together. We can only hope that that's the case. But at least we have quieted some of the noise about the blowing it up. We have some stability right now uh, going into the season, getting Dak and CD's contract done. Now, the question will be is, will the Cowboys continue to try and do enough to win the Super Bowl? That, that's going to be the question. Um, one of the big things that Jerry Jones said was he's seen teams that have traded for running backs and win the Super Bowl. I guess we can talk about the Eagles doing that when they traded with the Miami Dolphins to get um, Jay Ajayi um, that helped them win the Super Bowl in 2017. Could lightning strike twice where the cowboys make a move you never know let's listen to the the gang here this morning trash the dallas cowboys and give you their thoughts on whether or not the cowboys have a chance against the new orleans saints this weekend is Dallas on upset alert. Yes, they are, Greeny. When I look at that offensive line and how they mauled the Carolina Panthers in game one, they protected Derek Carr. He diversified the football through strikes to Shee. Yeah, I, I, this is a game that the Dallas Cowboys better watch out for because they could easily blow this one and lose it. Yeah, so, so week one can be a liar, yes. right? Like week one sometimes lies to you. So there are some things we're going to find out in this game. Like we came out, Dan, you've been my, 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 my stalwart on Monday since we launched this show. This was a first. We came out of a Cowboys game on Monday and talked about the, the other, other team. team. Yeah. I have no idea what to make of Dallas uh, yeah. after week one. And then with the Saints, I, I think we all came out of that game Neither saying, can you teams, believe how bad yes. Carolina yeah. is? Neither of these teams have been tested. Yep. Right. Yes. Neither of them have. Dallas wasn't dominant in week one. They were mature and, and give them the credit. I will say this. This game, remember, New Orleans has got a new offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, Gary Kubiak's son. Mm -hmm. The style of offense that he runs is the one that Dallas has notoriously struggled with. Yes. I've watched in the last three years play mm. football. So I think some of the elements that they have in their offense – Gives me a little bit of, all right, I've watched you and talked about. Put up a pretty good performance against the Browns. And my thing to your point is the last last year, the Cowboys' last game, we can still see Aaron Jones running, banging his head on the goalposts with how the Green Bay Packers decided to run the football. The New Orleans Saints, to your point, their new offensive coordinator, they ran for 180 yards. Kamara, yeah. Taysom Hill got some of that action. Same scheme. Yes. So I want to see the Dallas Cowboys now going against this offense. Can you buckle down and stop the run? Mm. That, to me, is going to be the question. 
question mark of how they finished last year. Has mm -hmm. things really changed under now new defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer? I think the run game for New Orleans was a point of emphasis in the offseason because they weren't good last year. And when you have a Alvin Kamara, you have a Jamal Williams, and you have a Taysom Hill, that's a three-headed monster that's coming at you now if you're the Dallas Cowboys. This will be a real test. going to have to deal with, hey, they're going to make a point of emphasis. They're going to see if Dallas are going to have the ability to stop the run. If they can't, then they're going to run it down their throats. And the Dallas offense will be interesting to watch. You'd figure C.D. Lamb should be a little more in, you know, more in shape and yeah. all that, having held out as long as he did. The tight end is banged up, and that could be a question. Is he playing for you? I don't think so. Yeah. Right? And, and do I have that yeah, right? Yeah, they got good news as far as the length of his absence. They don't think it's going to be as long as they feared, but he, this week. He's not playing this the week. Is That's a factor. Good. That Zeke looked real good last yeah. week. How long does that last? <laughs> Both sides, this is an interesting game. I don't think Dallas's offense was dominant. Last week, I right. think we they, were they, were they were fine. They were fine going so against it, number one defense. It is fair to say, all right, another good challenge against mm -hmm. the New Orleans defense that's got plenty of talent. Mm -hmm. Let's put the picks on the screen. Does anybody like New Orleans in this game? Anybody? The answer is no. Okay. Again, Kmart not making picks with us here, um, but uh, we all like Dallas in this game. The question of the six and a half is another one. Now, I'm being told. There you have it. So, their offense was fine last week against, you know, Cleveland on the road. Okay? They were fine. Okay. We'll see what we're going to see. Um, definitely going to be a test for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, we know Derek Carr. Um, we know Derek Carr rather well. Uh, the Cowboys will be able to put on a lot more pressure than what the Carolina Panthers did and should be a lot better at stopping the run. New Orleans did rush for like 180 yards against Carolina, but I think the defense of the Cowboys might be a little bit, just a little bit better, but we'll see. It's the NFL, it's week two, and you still don't know what teams really are at this moment. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and we will see you soon. Don't forget, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll be live streaming, so make sure you tune in, and tomorrow, 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock Eastern, we'll have our members' uh, Zoom call live stream. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.